morning. Uh, it's a lovely spring day. It's early April. And I'm going to go to the Mayfield Bay, a uh, place for bumblebees to nest. Um, I no guarantees that this is going to work. Uh, it's pretty hit and miss. It's quite difficult to get bumblebees to nest where you want them to in the garden. But I've, I've tried many things over the years and, and what I'm about to build does sometimes work. So we'll give it a go. Uh, if you fancy having a go at home, it's really um, cheap and easy to do if you're lucky enough to have the right bits lying around, which I have. I haven't spent any money on this at all. Um, so, to start off, we have a hole in the ground, um, which I dug. Um, it's not very big, it's, but it's maybe big enough to fit a small football in just about. Um, and I'm going to line it with some twigs at the bottom, which is just so that when I put in the insulation, it doesn't sit on the, on the damp soil, it just keeps it up. Now, then, I've got here some nice, soft, fluffy wool uh, insulation that um, you can buy for putting in lofts. I actually scrounged this from the uh, packaging of um, some food we had delivered that was insulated with this to keep it from getting too warm. Anyway, uh, it's, so it's just wool, um, just wool fibre and if you fluff it up as much as you can and sprinkle it in, um, so bumblebees they need a, insulation for their nest, they have to keep their brood warm, particularly in the spring when it's cold. And naturally a bumblebee looks for um, a, a hole in the ground with an old mouse nest in it um, uh, the bees can't gather their own nest material, can't carry it, um, so they rely on finding an old abandoned nest that somebody else built before. Um, so it's, it, you, the, whatever kind of nest box you try and tempt them into, probably the key thing is having nice cosy insulation in there for them to nest in. If you haven't got that, they, they won't come. Um, you also, if you can, need to try and make a little hollow in the centre that connects to the way into the nest, which is quite difficult to do. But basically, ideally, you want them to be able to walk straight into a nice little cosy chamber in the centre, which I'm trying to kind of make there. Um, this is the way I'm hoping they'll come in. Okay, that should do. Feels all right. I wouldn't mind sleeping in there if I was a lot smaller. Uh, and then we have some a slab, concrete slab. You could use a big a piece of wood, a plank, doesn't really matter, anything just to cover it over and keep the rain out. If you press it down so there's not too many gaps around the sides, I've left a little little space here at the front. So this is this is provides a nice, hopefully, um, uh, attractive entrance to the nest. Uh, bumblebees at this time of year, they're flying around looking for somewhere to nest. These are the queens that have been in hibernation since last summer. And you see them flying about backwards and forwards low to the ground. And they, if they see a hole or a dark space under something, they'll crawl in and investigate. So I'm hoping that they'll come in here and, and take a shine to, to what I've built for them. So you could just leave it at that. That's all you need, One, a slab or a piece of wood and a bit of insulation. And I've built these before and they, they seem to be, when they do work, it's usually white-tailed bumblebees, Bombus leucorum, that take to them. It's a species that often nests under garden shed floors, actually. I guess this is pretty similar. Um, but today I'm gonna, gonna um, actually try a second story, so try actually make two nest sites in the same place, one on top of the other. Um, I'm not so sure this will work, although I've been told that it sometimes works. Um, and seeing as I had some old bricks lying around, I thought I'd give it a go. So, uh, let's just do this. All right, all we're doing is making another chamber on the top that possibly another bumblebee queen might find. They, you do occasionally find bumblebee nests very close to each other. They don't mind being next to each other. So in theory, I might get two in here. I'd be amazed if I do, but nothing ventured. So again, loads of nice cosy nest material. Don't pack it in too tight because the bee won't be able to force her way in. And if I can just make a little hollow in the middle um, for her to crawl into, it makes it easier for her rather than having to barge her way in there and fashion it herself. Um, okay, marvellous. Right, now we just have to put the lid on and 
we're good to go. So this is just another slab, as you can see, exactly like the other one. Um, stick it in place, make sure the bricks haven't moved. So this little gap here, just the width of a finger, or just wide enough for um, the queen to walk in. Shouldn't be too many gaps elsewhere, so it's nice and cosy in there, Not, no wind blowing through. Um, and uh, with a bit of luck, she'll take to it. Um, time will tell whether it works. Um, if you just happen to have some old mouse nest to hand, or found an old mouse nest in the garden, um, put some of that nesting material in. It's, it's, I've, I've, a lot of people think that this, that bumblebees actually, uh, when they investigate these holes, they use the smell of a, a, a of mouse as a sign that there's likely to be a nest in there that they could use the insulation they need. So um, maybe that'll help to get your nest occupied. I don't know whether this will work, but fingers crossed there are I just actually seen over there a bumblebee queen flying backwards and forwards, so we better get out of the way and see if we can tempt her in here. Thank you. <laughs>